Gyrodactylus solaris is very unusual in that it's extremely pathogenic to its host, the Atlantic salmon par, and it causes mortalities of upwards of 90 to 95 percent. So if Gyrodactylus solaris is introduced into a river, it can decimate the salmon population in that river, and that's why it's of huge ecological and economic significance. If Gyrodactylus solaris came to Scotland, it would be incredibly damaging. Uh, we know that um, the Scottish fish are not resistant to this parasite. Uh, the Baltic salmon are, but the, uh, the North Sea ones are not. Uh, and if it came to Scotland, it would devastate our fisheries. It would be the end of salmon fishing as we know it, and all the economic benefits and the biological benefits that accrue from that. If you look at the importance of our freshwater fisheries in Scotland, we see it sustains alone 2,000 jobs and is worth nearly £35 million to the Scottish economy each and every year. So that's why it's so important that we keep this parasite out of Scotland. Well, in the late 1970s, there were mass mortalities of Atlantic salmon par in Norwegian rivers. And eventually it was discovered that these mortalities were due to Gyrodactylus solaris. And the parasite has now spread, I think, to over 40 rivers in Norway and effectively decimating the salmon population in those rivers. And it's a huge problem for them, both ecologically and economically. After the introduction of the parasite in uh, Norway in 1975, the parasite is spread to 46 rivers in Norway. And uh, everywhere the salmon uh, uh, stocks are threatened by extinction. If we hadn't done anything, we would have a further spread of that disease. We can't have this everywhere. If we do that, then we'll lose the salmon. The Atlantic, North Atlantic salmon in Norway would die out. Because the fish is the host for the Gyrodactylus solaris, by killing all the hosts, we're able to uh, remove any possibility of the Gyrodactylus living in this region. So killing the host will eventually kill the parasite that will make us able to restock the river again and then get the salmon back. This is, uh, let us say, a medium-sized uh, river in Norway. And uh, to treat this river, it's about uh, 30 kilometers long. Uh, we need about 100 people working uh, with this project. In addition, we also uh, have about uh, 20, 30 persons that are uh, picking up dead fish in the river. So the whole uh, project uh, it's about uh, 120 people working for a couple of days. Basically, I think we're, we're trying to make a cloud of Rotnon flow through the river. Our job is to make sure that there's no gap in that cloud, that, that we'll have Rotnon in all, in all waters containing live salmon, and that will kill all the fish. Well, in Norway, the treatment has been something which sounds rather extreme in that they've used principally rotenone to kill all the fish in the river and by removing the fish you remove the host for the parasite and eventually the parasite will die out. The f rivers are then restocked um, to bring the fish populations back and this has really been the only alternative that Norway has had to otherwise living with the parasite and having no Atlantic salmon so it's been a very tough decision but it's one that they've had to take. Fishing is the lifeblood of this river. Uh, so we've been doing everything we can to raise the awareness with fishermen uh, so that they can take all the precautions that they can to stop it coming in because that's the most important thing we can do is to prevent it coming here in the first place. Well, the Scottish Government's been putting in a lot of effort and partnership with the freshwater fishery sector in Scotland to ensure we have controls in place and we're prepared for any potential outbreak. And we've been working very closely with the Norwegians. Our officials have been in Norway working over there to learn from their experience. And likewise, the Norwegians have helpfully come to Scotland to help us with our contingency plan. But the big message is that prevention is much better than cure and we have to take every single step possible in partnership with anyone who may be visiting any of these infected rivers in Norway or elsewhere to ensure that we keep this parasite out of Scotland by taking the necessary precautions. Gyrodactylus solaris is a very small worm and it's actually quite easy to kill which means that disinfection can be carried out by measures as simple as drying out the equipment, drying it thoroughly for probably a day at least. Uh, or something as easy as freezing, putting any equipment that's been in contact with infected waters, putting any of that gear into a freezer for a period would also kill the parasite. And then there are chemical disinfection methods such as uh, proprietary 
chemicals which will kill the parasite, but also high salt solution will kill it. So getting rid of the parasite is actually relatively easy when you're talking about equipment and material that's been in the water. Disinfection is uh, one route, uh, but there are other simple ways you can do it. Um, uh, if you obviously can't put a canoe in the deep freeze, but you can put fishing rods and fishing uh, reels in deep freeze, that will kill the parasite. You can dry uh, equipment um, by putting them in the airing cupboard, or the Norwegians use hair dryers um, to dry equipment. That will work as well. If you're using uh, uh, felt uh, boots or if you're using uh, neoprene waders, dry them out thoroughly before they. Uh, come into this uh, into this water. Uh, there are lots of things you can do without actually putting them into chemical itself. Anglers and anyone who uses Scotland's rivers knows better than anyone else how important the iconic Atlantic salmon is to Scotland in terms of our heritage, in terms of our image, in terms of our tourism sector and the wider economy and therefore we need everyone who has a role to play to be responsible and take the necessary precautions to keep this parasite out of Scotland.